Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning to the Powerhouse Church of God family, those that join in with us on every Sunday. And we're glad to be with you yet again. Another opportunity to share with you in the presence of God and the presence of all of these people. Uh, we give God thanks and praise for yet another day. Uh, I'm so thankful to be in the land of the living. We've been going through some difficult times, but I've learned to celebrate and give thanks in the midst of all challenges. Let's begin with prayer uh, this morning. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We welcome you uh, into this time of assembly. Uh, we give thanks and praise for the households that share with us on each of these uh, gathering opportunities. And we thank you for the provisions that you've made for life and for living. And so we welcome your divine presence and your divine anointing we pray for the work and power of Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us and to keep us, surround us and empower us. Uh, we pray for those that are looking in. We pray for the blessings of your kingdom upon households and families and fathers and mothers, and husbands and wives and sons and daughters. And we pray, oh God, for especially for those that are going through challenging times. We pray for your peace, your comfort. We pray for healing and health. We pray for uh, everything that is needed in this moment for everyone that's attending to even this prayer moment. Father, we thank you for your ministering angels. We thank you for your living word. We thank you for Holy Spirit yet again. We give you thanks and praise today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Once again, good morning to everyone. Uh, we, uh, we have yet another opportunity to honor our God and our Lord. Uh, we're gonna ask Sister Simon to come with the scripture reading for today. Uh, uh, we'll, of course, try to be brief as we endeavor to do every Sunday. Uh, but we're going to do as the Lord has purpose for us to do on this day. So, Sir Simon, would you come? Good morning, and God bless you this morning. I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 23, verses... 28 through 30. I will send Terah ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, Canaanites, and the Hittites, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals would multiply and threaten you. I will drive them out a little at a time until your population has increased enough to take possession of the land. God bless you this morning. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Simon. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me just remind you that we're going to celebrate communion uh, on this service uh, after we're done with the message, and we're going to give you an opportunity to gather your elements to, to join with us when we complete our message for today and close out. Also, I, I want to extend congratulations to uh, Sikori. She's looking in, or grandmother extend a celebration of her graduation that's coming up on Thursday as I've been, uh, we've been informed. And so uh, she's, graduating from college. So uh, please extend congratulations 
uh, to Socori and any others that perhaps we've missed along the way. Uh, and happy birthday to any of those that we've missed along the way as well. Uh, we want to uh, extend that celebration to each one of you. Let's go on and get into the word today. Uh, the title of the message is Little by Little. As a somewhat of an introduction, I, uh, let me, if you, you already know that I do a little walking uh, during the week. I say a little, I do a lot of walking. I, three to four times a week, I walk four to five miles. And it's a time of meditation and prayer and contemplation. And uh, uh, even <laughs> I do a little singing, uh, but not long loud, my neighbors would probably uh, call the authorities or have me committed or something, but uh, I, it's a time for me of devotion. And one of the things I've noticed this past week, and it's kind of part of the prompting for uh, this message today, but uh, the Holy Spirit just made me aware of something, and, and that is they've got about, our neighborhood's been adding new homes here lately, and there, there, there are five homes or five buildings in various stages of construction, clearing the land, laying the foundation, cement and all, uh, and others are with the framework up and, and some are being finished up with plumbing and, and with electricity and painting and moving in appliances and such. And, and one of the five is pretty much complete. In fact, uh, uh, looked like a family's moving in. One of the things that became very clear to me is that that construction like that takes time. There are various stages where different skill sets come in to do various parts of the work. Uh, and, and it takes time to complete the building. And so that, that, that kind of reminded me uh, that as we wait for the return of our Savior and Lord and until this time is finished with the church and the Lord comes for us, we should be about building, uh, building lives, building souls, building the church, uh, building the kingdom of God. And uh, this Sunday, this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And uh, I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, uh, the message may not be specifically about Pentecost, but it draws from the power of Pentecost because Pentecost is a time when the church, the body of Christ was energized to do the work of the kingdom. So we must draw from what God has provided to do this work and to remember that it's his work and his work is always taking place. Uh, I'm reminded even as I start uh, this morning is that the Lord reminds us and even with the events that have taken place over the last year, uh, the last months and even the last few weeks and days, even in our own family and in our own body of believers, the, the things that have transpired. I believe God's still at work. And often, and it's, I'm, I'm, this is my perspective and this is how I'm understanding it is that, that God works in ways that we can't even imagine. We can't even understand sometimes that actually Isaiah says it this way. I'm going to look quickly here. And you know these verses. This is a New Living Translation, but it's a reminder for us. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. That's God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. 
and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. If we meditate on that, it, it should remind us that God's working even when we can't see him working. Sometimes God works suddenly. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes things happen too fast. Other times we think they are too slow. And sometimes things come about unexpectedly. And, and often, and as many of us, us can point to situations that we're in, that we're still waiting. Waiting for a change, waiting for a transformation, waiting for a breakthrough. And, and sometimes God works in ways that we're surprised. Weren't even expecting it, and, and there it is. And even... God's working when we seem to be disappointed with the outcomes. And I, I must testify, I may be disappointed with some outcomes of right recent days, but I must declare that God's still at work. Amen. Yes, he is. He's still working even though we don't like what's transpiring or how it's being done, God's still working. Let me say it in, in, in a way that aligns with the word. God still can work. Amen. We can't blame everything that happens on God. Mm -hmm. Often the things that happen in our lives are consequences of our decisions or indecisions. That's why God says, my ways are not like your ways. So I believe God and I declare his will be done in my life, our life, in this work. The psalmist tells us something that's good for this moment right now. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And often in our humanity, it's hard to wait. Particularly when we feel we need a breakthrough. We need an answer. We need comfort. We need something to happen now because it's our urgency but if you hear isaiah our urgency is not necessarily an urgency for god the psalmist says in psalm 37 34 wait on the lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off Thou shall see it. Sometimes we have to wait because God is doing work in another atmosphere, another area for our benefit. We've got to work, wait for God to do what he has purposed to do, maybe through others or through other circumstances. We never know unless God reveals it, how he's working. Yeah. And so we should wait. And, and we shouldn't discount anything taking place in our life. God will use things to kind of shape us for what he's doing. Let's go on with the message for today. Little by little, Sister Simon read from Exodus chapter 23. It's interesting scripture, and I'll supplement it with Old Testament scripture from Deuteronomy as well. God has a way of working that we can't see. But he says, just 
I've got a reason for working the way I do. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Simon read Exodus 23, 28, 29, and 30. I'll read it again. I will send terror ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites. This is Exodus. You remember Exodus is, is the, the, the narrative about the nation, the people, the Israelites coming out of Egypt. So you can appreciate it for us in this hour. Uh, the, 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 the people of God coming out of Egypt is a type or an example of, of us in this present day coming out of sin and bondage that we were in when we were in darkness, unsaved. But now, because of Christ, we've come out of the bondage of sin. So God is giving direction to his people as they are making the exodus out of bondage, Egypt. And he says, I will send terror ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites. Just, just a, a little more uh, context is uh, the, the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites were uh, occupants, or, or those were the people that occupied the, the, the promised land. God says, I'm going to give you that the nations of this world. And he said, I'm going to drive them out. And that's what he said. I'm going to send terror ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, Canaanites, and, but I will not drive them out in a single year. Notice what God said. I've got a plan. And that's a process. Because the land would become desolate and wild animals would multiply and threaten you. Just so you can appreciate, God said, there's a reason I don't move quickly in some matters. Let me say this for our own personal benefit. Sometimes God won't move in the way you want because you couldn't handle it if he moved quickly as you wanted it to. Because yes, yes. he's telling the, the nation of Israel, said, I'm not going to drive out your enemies because wild animals, a worse situation would come upon you and you couldn't handle it. And he said this, I will drive them out a little at a time. Oh, I hope you, if you don't hear the rest of the message, God's working even if you can't see it. Yes, he is. It may be little by little. Yes. I want to encourage you to stay in the fight. Hallelujah. Stay in the family of God. Yes. Stay in the spirit of yes. God. Because God is doing the work little by little. And just because I said little by little, that means to some of us, we may not even see it. My God. God's moving. And Deuteronomy 7, 17, I, I, I picked this out because it, it is even more graphic. Deuteronomy 7, 17 <laughs> Uh, this is Moses also speaking to the nation of Israel. He said, perhaps you will think to yourself, how can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and move on because I, I thought I would be short in this message today. But, but this is how we live through our lives. We, we, God wants us to stop looking at the threats out in the world. Our God is greater than anything we face. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Every circumstance that seems to be an impediment to our advancement in the things of God. God's still greater than whatever those mountains are, whatever those barricades are. Hallelujah. It says, how can we ever conquer? These? We may think, that, how can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? Verse 18, but don't be afraid of them. <sighs> Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. Remember the great terrors the Lord your God sent against him. You saw it all with your own eyes. Just so that you, just so you can hear what, what, what the scripture is telling us. Don't forget what God has done. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's, that's, that's a, that's a, a, 
That's a habit seemingly that we have is we tend to forget how good God has been. God has demonstrated his faithfulness. Yes, he has. Thank you, Jesus. Evidence. Yes, it's evidence in our lives. So we ought to rehearse and remember and, and look through your journal and remind yourself how faithful God has been. That's a good habit to have is to write it down every now and then what God has done so you can look back and see how God has shown you how good he is. Yes, hallelujah. Uh, uh, verse 19 again, remember the great terrors the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it all with your own eyes and remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use the same power against all the people you fear. Amen. Amen. This is Moses declaring. And then the Lord your God will send terror to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. No, do not be afraid of those nations, for the Lord your God is among you, and he is great, is, he is a great and awesome God. Yes, the Lord your God will drive those nations out of ahead of you little by little. Yes. You will not uh, clear them all away at once be otherwise listen otherwise the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you listen the lord said there's some other things in the world yes. that can be problematic amen amen if you're not ready to deal with them so God, God does some things in our lives, little by little. So I believe little by little, so you can develop some discipline, Amen. develop Amen. some spiritual muscle, yes. to develop some spiritual awareness, Amen. spiritual discipline, little by little. You will not clear them away all at once. Otherwise, the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. But the Lord your God will hand them over to you. He will throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. Yes. All right. Amen. Amen. God works. Hopefully, I've established that God, yes. this is a process. It's one of the processes yes. by which God, God can work suddenly, and he does work suddenly. Yes. But he doesn't always work suddenly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. I want to emphasize that God tends to work little by little. Uh -huh. Let me give you more evidence of that. Uh -huh. let, let, me, let me draw your attention to Jesus declaring something for us in John chapter 8. I'm going to move along now. This is John chapter 8. And Jesus, verse 28, Jesus said, When you, are, you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. Yes. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the Father taught me. Uh, just pause there. Uh, this is Jesus, the Son of God, God the Son. But notice he said, I only do what the Father has taught me. Just want to hear Jesus grew up as a man. Uh, as a, from a boy, man, boyhood into manhood. And he had to be taught. Not that he was no less God. He submitted himself to human restrictions. And so he had to learn obedience. Mm -hmm. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do what pleases him. This is Jesus speaking. Th then many who heard him say those things or these things believed in him. Notice that Jesus was winning souls even before he went to the cross. The many who heard him say these things believed in him. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, listen to this. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Oh, I want you to lay hold to that man of God, woman of God, God, little boy, little girl. Those that are listening in, lay hold to the word of God, his teachings. said, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. 
In verse 32, we often quote this, it says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And you've heard me often quote this little, little ditty here. It says, what will make you free? <laughs> uh, you say the truth will make you free. Uh, yeah, that's right. But it's the truth you know that makes you free. Amen. That's, that's why it's important to study you, the word. Because if you study it, you'll get it little <laughs> by little. Revelation and understanding. And when you understand the word of God and it becomes a part of your soul, your mind, and your spirit, it sets you free. Free from what? Free from bondage and control of sin because the truth obliterates, obliterates the lie yes. that the enemy has perpetrated in our lives. Amen. <sighs> Glory to God. <laughs> this, 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 I, I, I read something on this when, from the Jewish Bible. The Jewish Bible gave me some insight here on this. When Jesus declared, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Uh, the, the Jewish Bible explains it this way. It says, there's a kind of trust which falls short of making one really Talmud. That word Talmud is disciple. Yeah. That's the Jewish word, Talmud. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Talmudim are disciples, plural. There's a kind of trust which falls short of making one really a Talmud, or disciple mm -hmm. of Yeshua, Jesus. This is the, from the Jewish Bible. It says, a real Talmudin or Talmudin are disciples obey Yeshua. That's right. Real disciples obey them. Uh, the, the belief is one thing, but obeying him is a whole nother thing. Amen. Amen. Which is more than mentally acknowledging who he is. The, the popular quotation, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, is conditioned on obeying what Yeshua says. Amen. Yeah. Knowing the truth is obeying the truth. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And so, amen, that's why it's important to discipline yourself in the word. Because the power of the gospel, hear this, chips away at the lie. Yes. It obliterates yes. all of the, the, the holes and, and the hooks that the enemy has upon our lives from, from, from generations. From culture, hmm. from the devices in this world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, the truth chips away at it as you study it and meditate on it. Yes. Oh, yes. glory of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me finish with this. Little by little, bit by bit, it's how God works in our lives yes. and for our lives with him. That's, that's how God works. That's one of the processes. Yes, God worked suddenly. Uh, miracles are sudden works of God. Yes. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I, I submit to you that miracles are sometimes used by God. Sometimes I did say, oh, it's to get the attention of people so that they can come to truth. Amen. Let me finish with these four points. God's salvation process is little by little over generations. What do you mean, Pastor Simon? Galatians 4, 4 tells us this. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a virgin, a, a born of a virgin, made under the law, Galatians 4, 5, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. The process of salvation came about over generations. Let me, let me emphasize that Adam and Eve failed us. They lost the first estate. They, they, they lost right relationship with God, but God set a plan in motion. Amen. He, he declared that the seed of a woman would bruise your head. Spoke that over Satan. The seed of the woman is Jesus. 
<laughs> and when Jesus hung his head on the cross, he declared, it is finished. Yes. Now, that work is still working in our lives. And so we must continue little by little, bit by bit, walking out the salvation. Yeah. Uh, it's just so you can appreciate how this process worked. Jesus grew little by little. Yeah. Luke 2, 39 says, when Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law uh, of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Yeah. Jesus had to progress from childhood to manhood. Uh, I submit to you again, little by little. Amen, 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 amen. Let me say this. What are you saying, Pastor Simon? Your, your, your total transformation is not overnight. <laughs> but it's little by little. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says it was this way. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yes. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things are becoming new. Amen. If you stay in the word, you, you, you'll become You'll continue to become what God purposed you to be yes. so that you can appreciate it because of what Christ did. Your, your salvation is settled and established in Christ. Amen. Now, uh, the work that Holy Spirit is here to do is in process. Yes. We must walk in it. Jesus made disciples over a three-year process. Amen. Little by little. <laughs> he worked with them little by little over three years. <laughs> And then he finished up his work by saying this to them and those that followed them. Matthew 28, 19, we know this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, the Jewish Bible says, go and make Talmudin. <laughs> Amen. Those that not only uh, believe the word, but will obey the word. Go make obedient disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples. No, teach these new disciples. That's what Pastor Simon in the Powerhouse Church of God is endeavoring to do. Teach these new disciples yes, yes. to obey all commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Making disciples is a process of little by little. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, Isaiah 20, 10 says, 28, 10 says, he tells us everything over and over. <laughs> amen, amen. He tells us everything over and over, line upon line, precept upon precept. He tells us everything over and over, line upon line, precept upon precept. One line at a time, a little here and a little there. Amen. Discipline. Uh, in, in, uh, every parent knows you got to tell your children something more than once, more than twice, <laughs> and more than three times. Amen. Discipline is doing something over and over and over and consistently until it becomes your habit, yes. your lifestyle. Amen. That's the way God did. He, he, he teaches us everything over and over, little by little. Amen. This, this, this is how things operate. This is how God placed it in, in the earth realm. It's, it's in nature. It's a process of nature. Uh, seeds. The germination of seeds are not overnight. They don't become, a seed doesn't become a tree overnight. It is a little by little. Same way with seasons Amen. and months and days and years. Day into night and night into day. It's little by little. Yes, hallelujah. 
You ever watch a sunrise or a sunset? It's little by little. Yes, yes. Life is filled with transitions. <laughs> oh, there's a song. Yeah. Filled with transitions. God has purposed that we make transformations. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, transformations. Amen, amen. In our life, that's how character is developed. Amen. A little by little, your your thoughts are, are are shaped by the words you study and the words you hear. And the actions that come forth from the way you think. Your character is built little by little uh, by the word of God. Yes. Amen. Christian service, ministry. Amen. It, it, it's little by little disciplines. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Sister Simon, faithfulness is demonstrated over time. Amen. You can't show up one day and say, I'm a faithful servant of God, and you've never met the man or woman of God. You need to watch them yes. over time. Yes. Little Hallelujah. by little will demonstrate faithfulness yes. and trustworthiness. Amen. Amen. Little by little, little by little is demonstrated over time and observation. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I'm almost done. Uh, that's the way God operates. That's a process. And, and since it's Pentecost Sunday, let me emphasize that the process <laughs> has an overseer. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he, the process Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. has an overseer. Yes. And I submit to you that the overseer <laughs> and the enabler and the anointing yes. Hallelujah, and the provisions, and the corrector, the one who sets boundaries, yes. is Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, the work of Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is the one who builds us up little by little. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Romans uh, 1, verse 17, you've heard this, but notice that it says, for therein is the righteousness revealed of God, our, our righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. God's righteousness that, 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 that shows us how ragged our lives are. Yes. It's revealed to us from faith to faith. It is written that the just shall live by faith. Faith is trusting in God and believing in God. And how are you going to trust him unless you see him yes. as he is? Yes. The thing is, there are some things that you can't handle until yet because God says you're not ready to see them or experience them yet. But God will unfold what you need to understand and believe yes. little by little. That's it. Amen. That's the work of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit knows each one of us, yes. each one of you, each one of us that's listening into this. Place. Holy Spirit knows how to get what you need to you in the way that you can receive it. I'm sure some of you looking in today, God has sent a song to break your heart. He sent a message to stir your heart. He sent a messenger. Hallelujah. And often, often God uses circumstances to get our attention. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Uh, God's working little by little. This is 2 Corinthians 3.18, but we all, uh, every believer, this has been a, every believer, Holy Spirit does this. But we all, with open face beholding in a glass the glory of God, are changed into the same image, his image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Holy Spirit helps us to see what God wants us to see. Amen. Amen. Uh, he came to convict us of sin. Yes. I submit this to you. To each one of us, if you've never been convicted of sin in your life, Holy Spirit doesn't know who you are. Amen. Or let me say it differently. Holy yeah, Spirit yeah. knows you, but you don't know who Holy Spirit is. 
You've not been convicted of sin in your life. What is that, Pastor? Whenever you missed a step, whenever you've gotten out of line with the will and the word of God, Holy Spirit will convict your soul, man of God, woman of God, child of God. Yes. That's the work of Holy Spirit to keep us headed in the right path little by little, yes. going from glory to glory and faith to faith. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus finished it up for our benefit. He finished it up for our benefit in his high priestly prayer in John 17, 17. This is a verse that we ought to embrace and let it just saturate our souls for, for time and often re revisit it because Jesus prayed this because he knows this is the help that we need. Uh, and I embrace it because I ask the Lord to help me so that I can be set apart for his work. Yeah. Jesus prayed this. He says, make them holy by your word. Yeah. Make them holy by your truth. See, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the truth also can set you apart. Amen. Amen. The truth can make you holy under God. It yeah. says, yeah. Verse 1770, yeah. make them holy by your truth. Uh, King James says, sanctify them yes. by your truth. Your yes. word is truth. Yes, it is. Amen. Man of God, woman of God, child of God, everyone who's looking in, listening in right now, if you're not in the word of God, mm. not studying the word of God, listening and honoring the word of God, the scripture said the only way you can be set apart or made holy under God is to be in the word. Sanctify them, Jesus yes, prayed, yes. with your truth. Your word is truth. Hallelujah. Mm. Holy yes. Spirit is the one who sets us apart for God's will and purpose. Yes. And I submit to you once again, it's a process. Amen. We need to be in the crucible of life. The, the Holy Spirit working in us and upon us day by day. Yeah. We are to be renewed in the Spirit Thank you, Lord. day by day. Paul said in another place, he says, I die daily, dying to myself daily because the, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it keeps encroaching into my life space. And if I don't stay in the spirit, I don't make advancement yeah. in growth and discipline and living out my faith to the glory of God. Oh. Holy Spirit is here to help us. That's why the day of Pentecost fully came so that the church could be the church. We could be living epistles, yeah. amen. Living men and women, living after the spirit uh, and in the spirit of God, growing in the spirit of God day by day, bit by bit yeah. and little by little. To God be the glory, amen and amen and amen and amen. We give God thanks and praise. I pray that you see yourself. You don't worry about trying to become the PhD or the doctor of letters. Uh, you don't have to become the expert. <laughs> Just keep growing. Amen. Just keep growing in the word. Amen. Don't, don't, don't fall into the trap of measuring yourself by somebody else's standards or, or somebody else's achievement. You just grow in the word of God for your journey with the Lord. He, he will guide you because some, there are places that God may not want you to go. And you think you want to go because somebody else went there. God didn't, didn't necessarily plan for everyone to do the same thing. Amen. amen, amen. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance and, and there are diversities in gifts. So everybody is not going to be the pastor. Not everybody is going to be the prophet and apostle, amen. evangelist amen. and the teachers. Not everybody, everybody's going to be a child of God amen. and submitted to his will and divine purpose. Sister Simon, would you come? We're going to celebrate the communion, uh, our call and provision to be one with Christ. Hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. 
the one who said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. As we prepare uh, to celebrate communion together, let's hear the word of God that says, uh, as you prepare to take communion, examine yourself. Amen. This is between you and God. Uh, I don't claim to know anything about anything that you need to get right before God. You know, and he knows. Holy Spirit knows because he's putting his finger on it right now. Amen. And what I encourage you to do, even before you celebrate with us right now, is to confess that. Yes. The scripture says you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you. Thank you. Because he doesn't want you to take it out of line because this is a sacred ceremony that he initiated. And, the, and the, the scriptures tell us, examine yourself. You don't want to do anything like this or anything for the glory of God in sin. Amen. The, the, the privilege we have and the blessing that we have is if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us. So as you do that, the Father forgives you. And now we can celebrate together. This is the bread yes. that represents his body. Oh, we, we join together now and celebrate the sacrifice that Jesus made for our salvation. He was bruised for our iniquity and chastisement of his peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So we declare oneness with Christ as we eat the bread. Oh, Amen. Amen. The cup represents his blood. Yes. Uh, without his shedding of blood, there was no remission, canceling mm -hmm. of the sin in our lives. And so we thank the Lord afresh for the work of Calvary yes. and for initiating the ceremony to remind us. Amen. We're doing it again Amen. to remind us again that he paid sin's price. Hallelujah. And because of it, we're sons and daughters of God. Yes. Let's drink in celebration and oneness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, yes. Sister Simon. Mm -hmm. ah, we pray God's blessings upon you. I want to encourage you to continue to study uh, the word. <clears throat> Give faithful discipline in studying the Word of God. I want to remind you that our plan is to gather again in our sanctuary on Father's Day in June. And Sister Simon will be coordinating with those that will help us ready the building for our regathering. Uh, let's pray one for another. Pray for us as we pray for you. Pray for one another. And uh, let's look forward to gathering together on uh, this coming Wednesday online. And uh, we'll give you more information on our Sunday school in the coming days. Uh, to God be the glory in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, if you're on and you've never accepted Christ in your life and you've got convicting presence of Holy Spirit letting you know that you need to be saved, the scripture says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that's work of Holy Spirit. And uh, I would encourage you um, to reach out to me and uh, I will help you with next steps uh, for your new life in Christ. To God be the glory. We love you and we give thanks and praise to Almighty God. Have a blessed rest of the day. God bless you. Bye-bye.